Hi guys, hope you are going well. Today we are talking about Penny Dreadful episode 7, Possession. Now before I even talk about Penny Dreadful, I just have to address what is going on behind me. So you might know if you've been watching any of my other Penny Dreadful reviews or my other movie reviews in general that I had a wonderful collection of DVDs on this wall behind me that I used to film in front of. But I have a confession. They actually didn't belong to me. <laughs> they were my roommates uh, and he's moving out which is really sad to see him go and take his lovely wonderful collection with him so super sad about that kind of don't really want to talk about it too much and haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with that. Episode 7, Possession, it takes on a classic Penny Dreadful writing style and that is to be very intricate, lots of wonderful two-handers between characters, very rich, atmospheric, but not much plot. Three quarters of the episode are taken up entirely with Vanessa Ives' incredible and horrifying possession by the Egyptian goddess Amunet. Firstly, I have to say Eva Green, Vanessa Ives, I've said it countless times throughout this, you know, my whole review of the series. I love her. I loved the way they did uh, her first possession when she was uh, taken over by this demon in the past in the flashback episode. I think it was episode five, maybe. I absolutely loved that. I was mesmerized, captivated, horrified, all of those really incredible things. So I absolutely love that. And so to see another episode pretty much entirely dedicated to that same theme again. I loved it, but at the same time there was this little feeling in the back of my head that was like, okay, I have seen this before. I'm loving it, don't get me wrong, I'm absolutely loving it. Like, it was so scary. And in fact, in my opinion, some of the scariest stuff we've seen on this entire series so far. Now the men around her, of course, so Malcolm and the rest of the crew being Frankenstein, Ethan and Sam Bene even gets in there as well. They sort of unify around this horrific event and it kind of bonds them in a way. They all feel very much uh, like they have to protect her, but they all have very different ideas of what protection means. Uh, while someone like someone with more scientific mind, the doctor, Dr. Frankenstein, is of the mindset that sh this woman is dying before them over the week or however long that she's being possessed and she's fighting this demon invading her body. And he is of the mindset that the most kind thing would be to do as Vanessa wishes and to simply just let her die because that is what her body is doing. She's not feeding herself, she's not looking after herself, she's on all sorts of uh, drugs that Frankenstein is pumping her with and vitamins in order to keep her alive and he just thinks, let her go. Whereas someone like Sir Malcolm, for reasons possibly very selfish, well, very selfish, he's only trying to get to Mina and he thinks that Vanessa might have some way to connect with Mina in this sort of transitory state. And so Malcolm wants to keep Vanessa alive as long as possible. He thinks Vanessa is fighting the demon the best of her abilities and he wants to keep her alive. So they all have very different ideas of what saving her means and they kind of felt like a little family in a way with uh, Sir Malcolm being the patriarch at the head, then Ethan and, and Frankenstein being like these sort of um, jousting brothers. They were quite like they had a lot of good banter between them. They were even acting a little bit brotherly towards each other. Ethan took the time to teach Frankenstein how to use a gun. And Ethan even made this reference when uh, Sam Benny comes down and says, what's all the noise about when they're doing the gun practice? And uh, Ethan goes, oh, father is mad. So they even take on those sort of roles. I guess it is when you go, when you're in a house like that and you're all confined to the one house, people just naturally fall into this uh, hierarchical almost kind of order. I'm really hoping hoping we get to know what is up with Ethan, like what makes him special, why is he part of this group, there is clearly something going on. Some of the clues I felt like they dropped were in reference to him possibly being a werewolf, there were these, um, the clue early on they went to the zoo and these this pack of wolves came up and Ethan was able to sort of uh, send them away and have this kind of weird silent exchange with the leader of the wolf pack. That was the real, that was the biggest, most obvious clue. Some of the other clues um, 
were that uh, another time Ethan was at a dog fight and the dogs were like fighting and ripping each other to shreds and Ethan was really disgusted by the sight of that and unlike had to turn away and couldn't watch that and then this episode I thought there were a couple other wolfy type of clues thrown in there when uh, Ethan is at Vanessa's bedside and Vanessa is uh, in her normal state and having this glimpse of like normality she says to Ethan you know what it feels like to have this demon inside her trying to push its way to the surface it's like an animal scratching and clawing on the inside and the way she looks at Ethan it's like she's it's like they're sharing something unspoken. I'm gonna be pretty disappointed if I'm wrong, not gonna lie, I've kind of hedged all my bets on that one. I did really like the uh, religious undertones that were playing, especially in the second half of this episode once Ethan brings up the idea of bringing the priest in and each of the characters have to decide whether or not they, you know, A, think that that's a good idea that they should bring someone external into the house and into the craziness of what's happening in the house, but B, whether or not they even believe and they think that it is a good idea or that they even care like I said before Frankenstein like doesn't care at all he even insults the priest when the priest does arrive because he's a man of science and he thinks the priest is an absolute joke but it's clear that Ethan does believe in God and he is religious but then I'm thinking if Ethan is religious why was he so hesitant to take Broner's gift of Saint Jude the necklace so a couple of episodes ago, Brona Croft gifted Ethan her necklace to keep him safe and he was so hesitant to take that. He looked like he was almost afraid of this holy relic and I mean, I so so then that's why I thought he wasn't religious. And in this episode, when he does seem to want the priest there, he does invite the priest in and treats him respectfully. And then the ending was so crazy, it didn't like what when Ethan is able to perform this exorcism on Vanessa using the relic Saint Jude which he has around his neck holding it to his temp to her forehead and like reciting this Latin I don't know chant and I'm like how I at first I wasn't sure if maybe he's being possessed by Saint Jude or somebody as well like is that him it didn't really seem it seemed really out of his character but then I was thinking okay we don't know anything about his background except you know he obviously is ex escaping some sort of traumatic thing that happened in America or he is atoning for some previous sins in his life in some way so what if he this is my like <laughs> this is just me and my theories I don't know but what if he was a priest like he used to be a priest and he's been I don't know if he's been excommunicated or to use some sort of religious uh, symbolism what if he's just like a lamb that's been separated from the flock in some way so that's why he was so uh, anti-faith in the beginning or that's what it seems like but then in the moment of need he does step up and he is able to perform this exorcism on Vanessa. There was a lot going on but there wasn't a lot of plot movement because yeah she was possessed the whole time and then comes out of it at the end in the very last seconds where she's able to say I know where Mina is. I'm pretty excited to see how they're gonna wrap it up. I feel like we don't have enough time to address all our loose ends and because the season is picked up for season for another season I do think that they're going to leave a lot uh, leave a lot of questions unanswered and address it maybe next season which is kind of annoying I really hope that the finale focuses on Mina focuses on the vampire side of it and I want them to get out of the house because this whole episode they were in the house the whole time I want them to get out of the house I want them to get like in and I want there to be like fighting and I want it to be a little bit more epic in a way I guess instead of so much talking and theorizing and I just want some more action. Thank you guys for watching. Please comment down below if you have any theories that you'd like to share. Half the fun of this is trying to guess what they're gonna do next. Uh, I know a lot of you as well know the original literature and the like original material, so it's really fun to incorporate that with other like more imaginative theories as well. I'm really, really enjoying it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Keep up to date with my other Penny Dreadful reviews next week, finale, don't forget. Also subscribe to keep up to date with my movie reviews and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Soon. Bye.